Hi, this is Damon with Wildlife Rescue TV. I'm making this video tonight to talk about being prepared in the event that you find a sick, injured, or orphaned wild animal. What you should do, what you should do ahead of time to prepare for that. I think the best thing uh, you can do ahead of time is put the phone number of a local wildlife rescue, a reliable rescue, in your contacts on your phone or write it down, put it in your car somewhere, your vehicle. That way, when you do find an injured animal, you won't be looking all over the place for the right phone number to call or the uh, right person to contact. Obviously, sometimes even the rescues that you'll call uh, won't return your call immediately or something's going on. So if you, you're you not in your area or you can't get a hold of your normal rescue that you're used to dealing with, you should put Florida Fish and Wildlife, uh, their phone number, their hotline number into your phone. Or in your state, you might have DNR or another Fish and Wildlife. Uh, put their phone number, their hotline phone number in your phone under the contacts because if you can't find a rescue in the area that you're at immediately, if you call the hotline for Fish and Wildlife or DNR, uh, they usually have a list available of local rehabilitators and rescuers that can help you when you find a sick or injured animal. They usually don't send somebody out themselves, the, the state, but they can get you in touch with somebody who can help. So that's a good number to have in there. And I'm going to post Florida Fish and Wildlife's hotline number above me in this uh, video. And I'll also post our phone number for our wildlife rescue. If you're in the uh, Bradenton, Sarasota, Manatee County, uh, Sarasota County area, um, you can give us a call if you find a sick, injured, or orphaned animal. We'll help you out. Now, uh, the other things that you can do to uh, be prepared in the event that you find a sick or injured animal, keep a set of gloves handy in your trunk or in the back seat, wherever you can store a set of gloves, thick gloves that uh, an animal can't bite through or stick a talon through. You can also keep towels and a small dog carrier uh, that uh, locks real good at the door. That way, in the event that you do find an animal, you'll be ready to go. You have towels, glove, you can put it into a cage and cover it up. I don't recommend handling dangerous animals, but sometimes it can be necessary and you're in a certain situation. So uh, if, an, if a wildlife rescuer can't get there quick enough, and you feel like the animal's in danger and needs to be put inside of something or it's going to maybe, you know, crawl away. And you can do this, put the gloves on, uh, use a towel, wrap it around the animal, put it inside the cage, and then cover the cage with a towel as well. When you pick up an injured animal, it's going to be very stressed out. It's obviously already stressed out. It's been injured somehow or it's an orphan. So they're going to be stressed out. They look at a human as basically a predator and they don't want to be handled by us as much as you might try to comfort them and, you know, say something nice to them or something, they're, they're going to be stressed out. So they're already stressed out from some traumatic uh, injury or whatever just happened to them. So we don't want to stress them out more by handling, handling them much. So put them in a, a dark area inside of a cage, cover it up, uh, keep it warm. You want to keep them nice and warm. Don't let them uh, get cold or too hot even to... Um, just keep it nice and warm and dark, and that's going to reduce stress and reduce uh, chances of um, shock and um, just help them overall uh, be a little stress-free. So those are some of the things you can do. Uh, the other thing I wanted to kind of touch on was that it is illegal to keep uh, wildlife in your home or try to rehabilitate wildlife in your home without a permit. You have to have a state permit to deal with mammals, reptiles, and non-migratory birds. And then um, for migratory birds, you have to have a federal permit through U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Uh, the state permit, not extremely difficult to get, uh, but you do have to have some pretty good knowledge, medical knowledge of how to care for animals. And uh, you also have to vet have a veterinarian sign off on it and you know, you have to get an inspection from the state. But uh, the federal permit's much harder to get, and you have to have the space for the caging and inspections, veterinarians. You have to have over, uh, for this federal permits, a thousand hours of, of experience working with those animals over one year's period of time. So that um, that being said, it's just a bad idea if you don't have a permit to keep 
any wild animals in your home for any period of time. Better to take them to a rescue or a veterinarian as soon as possible, somebody who's qualified to care for those animals. I know that some people think they're doing right by taking a cute little bunny or squirrel or something home and trying to care for it at their house, but if you don't have any knowledge, you're probably going to harm the the animal more. And often, I, it happens to us very often, people bring us animals that they've had for weeks, if not months sometimes, and uh, they're in horrible conditions when they bring them to us. They've been taking care of this animal because they got it and they thought it was cute and it was going to be their their you know kind of project to take care of this animal not realizing that not only did they have it illegally but they were taking very poor care of it feeding it the wrong diet all that stuff and i know their hearts are in the right place and um and that's fine but um you really the best in the best interest of the animal take them to a facility that is qualified knows what they're doing or take them to a veterinarian um, where they can treat them properly and get them to the right place so um, always be as quick as possible about getting those animals to uh, a facility and that way you won't get in trouble the animal will be in better shape those are some of the things you can do to uh, be prepared when you find a sick injured or orphan animal have a phone number handy to call either the state or a, a local rescue have your little kit with all your stuff. Um, make sure to be safe, be responsible. Don't put anybody in danger. Slam on the brakes in the middle of the road. Uh, always find a safe place to pull over, put the hazard lights on, all that. Be calm. Don't freak out about it. If you find an injured animal, um, yes, they need help, but uh, you don't want to kill yourself or anybody else in the process of helping that animal. That won't help uh, yourself or the animal at all. Um, so just uh, be safe out there. Be prepared and you can always call me if you find a sick or injured animal the phone numbers here in the video and I thank you for watching wildlife rescue TV